Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and in the next few minutes we're going to take a look at both the radial as well as the graduated filter in Lightroom. Now these two filters can help us to selectively make adjustments to our image in order to kind of guide the viewer's eye through the photograph. So let's begin with this image and I'm going to select my graduated filter over here on the right hand side. You can also tap the M key in order to select that with a keyboard shortcut. And you can see that there are a lot of different effects that you can load this graduated filter with. For example, if I wanted to change the color temperature or tint, if I need to change exposure, contrast, highlight shadows, clarity, etc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset all of the sliders. In this case, there's only one slider that's been changed, but if there were multiple sliders that had been changed, the easiest way to reset it is by double clicking on the word effect. So now we can see that all of the sliders here are at the zero position. And what I want to do is I want to decrease the exposure in this area to focus the viewer on this middle set of statues. So I'll decrease the exposure slider, maybe, I don't know, three quarters of a stop or something. It really doesn't matter because this is completely non-destructive. And even after I drag out my graduated filter, I can readjust these settings. So I want the filter to start maybe right about here, and then I'm going to click and drag out the actual gradated area. So you can see that there's three lines. So at the top line here where I started dragging, this area is going to be completely affected. It will have 100% of whatever changes I make in these sliders. Then this is the fade range here where the center point will be 50% and then by the time we reach this other line, it will be 0%. Now if I hover my cursor over any of the lines, we could make this larger or smaller, making this either a shorter or a longer gradient. If I position my cursor over the center line, you'll notice I get the double-headed arrows. That means that I can click and rotate this to make an adjustment. And you can see that even after I've drawn this, I can go ahead and refine the amount of exposure or add any additional options here by moving the slider. So I'm going to just decrease the temp color temperature a little bit and I'm gonna bring up the exposure a bit. I think that the gradient is a little too short, so I'm also going to just lengthen that a little bit. And then if I wanna reposition it, I can position my cursor over the pin and actually drag that, and then click just a little bit more to rotate it. So that's fine, I've darkened down this top area, but I might also wanna add a secondary graduated filter. In this case, I'm going to scroll up to the top and then click on New. You'll notice that the values reset here to the starting values when I clicked the last graduated filter. So I could go ahead and adjust these if I wanted to to set a new starting point. And then I can click and drag up into the image. I'll go ahead and change the color temperature, just making it a little bit cooler down there so that we've got this nicer, warmer area in the center of my image. Okay, so the next selective adjustment that I want to create, I'm going to use the radial gradient. And let's move to this next image here. And what I want to do is I want to add a little bit of light back here, kind of at the end of the tunnel, to draw your eye down towards this area. So we'll double click the word effect in order to reset all of those sliders. Now, the way this is going to work by default is I'm going to drag out the circle, and it's actually the areas outside of the circle that are going to be affected. So if I want to add a little bit of light here, I'm actually going to achieve that effect by darkening down the area around the circle. So I'll use the exposure slider, just move it a little bit to the left, maybe about one stop, and then let's scroll down and just make sure that the invert mask is off, which it is, and then I'll click and drag out in my image. Now we can see by toggling on and off the effects here at the bottom of the selective adjustment panel that what's really happening is I'm not brightening the end of the tunnel, but instead I'm darkening down all of the rest of the image. If I wanted to, I could also add additional adjustments. For example, I could desaturate 
the tunnel outside of this area. I could also come down and maybe decrease the sharpness a little bit. I could even add a little bit of a color tint if I wanted to. And I don't have to worry about these adjustments at any time because they're always non-destructive, meaning that if I don't like them later, I could just double click on the word saturation in order to reset that. If I need to resize the radial filter, I can stretch it by using one of the anchor points on the sides or the top or the bottom. If I want to stretch it and keep the proportion of it, then I can hold down the shift key and drag those. If I wanted to make it an oval and then rotate it, I could slide in the anchor point and then you'll notice when I position my cursor near the thin line there, it gives me the double headed arrow and I can go ahead and rotate this. But for now, I'm gonna keep it as a circle hold down the shift key and just make it a little bit smaller and then reposition it there where I want it. If you hover the cursor on top of the pin, you'll notice that it displays the mask overlay. In order to hide that, all I need to do is move my cursor away from the pin. If I wanted to add a secondary adjustment, of course I can do that as well. Let's say for example, I wanted to lighten an area of the walkway here. Well, I need to scroll up to the top and choose new so that I create a new adjustment. But watch what happens when I click and drag out. You can see that it's preloaded with a negative exposure so it's making everything else a lot darker. With this radial filter selected, and I know it's selected because the center of the pin is darker, I'm gonna tap the delete key in order to remove that. Then I'm going to make a few changes to the sliders in the effects panel. I'm going to increase the exposure to actually add a little bit of light in this area and I'll scroll down and I will invert the mask so that when I draw the oval, I'm making sure that what's being affected is what's inside of the radial filter. Now I can click and drag out and you can see how the area inside of the filter is being affected. I'll make it a little bit more of an oval I'll rotate it a little bit and then just drag it a little bit larger and reposition it using that pin inside. Of course, you can see here with this one that I'm actually dragging it off the image area so you don't have to be constrained to your radial filters being just held within that image area. Now, if I wanna to toggle this on and off, we can preview it using the little light switch at the bottom of the effects panel here. Here's before and here's after. So you can see how we can guide the viewer's eye through the photograph. So there you have it, two ways to make selective adjustments in Lightroom using the radial filter and the graduated filter. My name is Julianne Cost. Thanks for joining me.